everyone, and welcome to week number 45. We're getting pretty close to the end here. This week, we're going to continue in our series on synthesis and covering the subtractor, and we're going to cover how filters and envelopes help modify and sculpt the sound. As I mentioned last week, in subtractive synthesis, a filter is the most important tool for shaping the overall timbre of the sound. The filter section in subtractor contains two filters, the first being a multi-mode filter with five filter types, and the second being a low-pass filter. The combination of a multi-mode filter and a low-pass filter can be used to create very complex filter effects, but more on that in a bit. Before we go into what each filter type is, you first need to know about the two parameters that you're usually going to tweak, filter frequency, sometimes called cutoff, and resonance, which is sometimes called Q. The frequency slider is what you use to select which audio frequency you are affecting, and the resonance control boosts or accentuates a narrow band of frequencies near the cutoff frequency. Or in the case of the notch and bandpass filters, it adjusts the width of the band where frequencies are let through or cut. The types of filters included in filter 1 are low pass, band pass, high pass, and notch. Low pass filters are the most widely used filters in early analog synthesizers, and both a 24 dB and 12 dB per octave filter are included. Low pass filters let low frequencies pass and cut out the high frequencies. The difference between 24 dB and 12 dB is how steep the roll off curve is going to be. A bandpass filter cuts both high and low frequencies, while mid-range frequencies are not affected. A high-pass filter is the exact opposite of a low-pass filter, and it cuts out lower frequencies and lets the high frequencies pass through. A notch filter, which is sometimes called a band reject filter, could be described as the exact opposite of a band pass filter, in that it cuts off frequencies in a narrow mid-range band and lets the frequencies below and above through. On its own, a notch filter doesn't really alter the timbre in any dramatic way, simply because most frequencies are let through. However, by combining a notch filter with a low-pass filter, using filter 2, more musically useful filter characteristics can be created. This filter combination can produce pretty soft timbres that can still sound clear, and the effect is especially noticeable with low resonance. The keyboard amount knob allows you to have the filter 1 cutoff increase as you play further up on the keyboard. Something that is useful and slightly different in the subtractor is the additional filter 2. Now this is a 12 dB low pass filter, which is connected in series to filter 1, which means the output of filter 1 is connected directly to the input of filter 2, and it can be used to create some very interesting filter effects. You activate filter 2 by clicking on this button here. With filter link activated, the filter 1 frequency controls the frequency offset of filter 2. If you have different settings for filter 1 and filter 2 frequencies, then filter 1 cutoff will control both of these settings, but keep the relative offset between them.
The next areas that sculpt the sound are the envelope generators. Envelope generators are used to control several important sound parameters in analog synthesizers, such as pitch, volume, filter frequency, etc. Envelopes govern how these parameters should respond over time, from the moment that a note is struck on the keyboard to the moment it is released. Standard synth envelope generators have four parameters, attack, decay, sustain, and release, or ADSR. There are three envelope generators in the subtractor, one for volume or amp, one for filter one frequency, and one modulation envelope, which has selectable modulation destinations. Let's start with attack. When you play a note on your keyboard, the envelope is triggered. This means it starts rising from zero to the maximum value. How long this should take depends on the attack setting. If the attack is set to zero, the maximum value is reached instantly. If this value is raised, it will take some time before the maximum value is reached. Next is decay. After the maximum value has been reached, the value starts to drop. How long this should take is decided by the decay parameter. The sustain parameter determines the level the envelope should rest at after the decay. If you set sustain to full level, the decay setting will not be heard at all since the volume of the sound is never lowered. And lastly, we have the release parameter. Now this works just like the decay parameter, except it determines the time it takes for the value to fall back to zero after you release the key. Longer release times will allow the envelope to gradually fade out. On both the filter and mod envelopes, you can use the amount knob to decide how intense the effect is and also use the invert button to have the envelope work inverted or opposite values so that the sliders work in reverse. That is, a value all the way at the top is actually a value of zero. The mod envelope is very useful for creating very predictable changes in sound that will repeat each time the envelope is triggered. Next week, we're going to be continuing with our synth school, and I'm going to be covering the LFO section and performance modifiers like velocity, aftertouch, and the pitch and mod wheels. Well, again, that's it for another week, and I am James Bernard from Propellerhead Software, and I'll see you next week with another tip. Bye.